The one topic that Shannon and I like to discuss on this show, we've discussed it a couple of times, is the idea of the four-day work week. And, and me and Shannon have been doing this show for about four, not quite five years yet. And every year we tend to bring it up once, maybe twice, where we have the conversation with you, the listener, and we talk about the pros and cons of it, the logistics of it, and try to talk about it from all angles. Well, fortunately, I was able to find someone who is um, an expert on this topic, someone who um, it, who heads up a group that is always on the best places to work list. So Joel Patterson joins me right now uh, on the phone line. Uh, he heads up the Vested Group. Uh, and like I said, they've got a great reputation. Joel, thank you so much for your time today, man. Hey, happy to be here. All right, cool. So, all right, the four-day work week, um, you know, we're uh, more and more articles are coming out that show that more companies are shifting to these four-day work weeks. And apparently um, it's something that's prevalent in Iceland, and it's kind of becoming a new framework for companies all over the world. Can you talk about that for a second? Yeah, uh, it, it is uh, becoming more of a thing. Uh, like, like It sounds like you and Shannon have been discussing for a while. Four-day work, work, work week is not new. What I do think might be new to some people, um, at, at least for, for me, for my sake it was, is when I talk about four-day work weeks in years past, it's always been four 10 days, four 10-hour days, right. or maybe four nine-hour days. What we're talking about now is a shift to four eight-hour days. So that's a, that's, a, that's a big difference compared to what, um, what people are used to now. And there's this model called 180-100, and that means that, that workers get 100% of their pay, for 80 percent of the time but they have to commit to maintaining 100 percent productivity which seems kind of crazy when you think about it because well, what have they been doing already right i mean uh, i would assume people are trying to maintain productivity anyway but, but really what this allows companies and, and people to do is prioritize what they're working on i mean we all know that we've spent time in meetings we probably didn't need to be in or maybe they're uh an hour meeting and they could have been 30 minutes it's it's, it's encouraging people to look at that and see if there are ways to make your job more efficient. And in exchange, you get an extra day off to do, you know, maybe it's more work, who knows, or maybe it's going on a vacation. Um, and, and, and you mentioned Iceland, and Iceland actually, is, it, the population of Iceland is only 350,000 people. So it's, it's, it's a big difference compared to what we have here in America. But since 2015, they have been instituting this four-day work week uh, nationally and 85% of their workers are, are currently on it. And it's, it's worked really well there. So there is a framework. Uh, people have proven that it can be done. There are clearly a ton of, of uh, issues to try to overcome in order to, uh, to make it work for all industries. If you think about things like um, you know, companies that are paid hourly or employees that are paid hourly. Mm -hmm. um, if you think about things that like uh, industries where you bill your time, for example, maybe it's an attorney or uh, professional services. Those are those are things we've got to work through. But you know, for the first time in forever, maybe ever, I think there's actually an opportunity to look at a four-day work week. What companies would you say are best suited for the four-day work week? <clears throat> well, you know, COVID drove a lot of this, yeah. right? The, the ability to just be flexible and to um, kind of roll with the punches is, is, over the last couple of years, we've clearly learned how to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I think any company, really the, the intent here is that any company should be able to look at this and find a way to make it work. But those that have been working remotely for the last couple of years, I think are more in line to be able to do something with this. Uh, you know, you think about how do you service clients? You know, you've got to work through some of the, the, those scheduling difficulties. But for the most part, uh, any organization, some will be more challenging than others, but any organization, there's, there's at least one more out there that has tried this and is working. Well, Joel, can I tell you one industry that I think, and and I'm not, I don't have the same mindset as you, and that's why I'm bringing you on because uh, I want to hear from that mindset because I think this is great if we can, you know, make this work and bring it, make it more mainstream. But one industry that I feel would have a hard transition to this is the radio industry, the one that I'm in, because we're so used to that five day work week. I mean, look at the programming, for instance. I'm the brand manager here at KPL. Programming is set up Monday through Friday. You have your list of shows. Then you have your weekend shows, whether they be on Saturday and Sunday or Saturday or Sunday. And 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 the way that the formats have been set up has been set up to that five-day work week. And, I mean, look, I'm talking to you right now on a Friday. So I'm curious if 
if you've thought about that, maybe even the radio industry or other ind industries may be similar to it, like in entertainment and such, of how to make a four-day work week, four-day work week work in this kind of an industry. Yeah, and, and those are those are really great questions, and, and there's a lot of, that would have to be worked out. Um, I'll tell you another one in, in line with that is, is you think about educators. You think about yeah. uh, sending your kids to school, yeah. and, and you're doing that five days a week, and everybody's used to that. I was actually on a show the other day for uh, in, for a station in Iowa, and they're already doing that in some of the rural areas. And I'm not saying it's down because you got to work worry about how, you know what do people do for their kids that are yeah. at home all of a sudden on a Friday. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of other things to, to but there are there are places in the country that are leveraging this and have found success with it on a small scale. I think that's the big thing. But what's what's happening right now? It started uh, a week ago on April 1st. Mm -hmm. Was a pilot among 30 to 40 companies here in, in America, including companies like Kickstarter, uh, Bolt, which is a large financial services company, uh, Unilever. So there's some legitimate names out there that are, that are piloting something like this. They've been assigned a mentor company that's gonna help them with any of these kind of questions and issues. So there's a real movement mm -hmm. and money and, and momentum behind seeing if it can work. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that it can, right. but I would say that if you look at and what's going on with the labor market right now, unemployment at historically low rates and everything tied to that. If you look at that, uh, this is another way for companies to potentially differentiate themselves from their competition. You know, right now, the, the biggest thing in a lot of businesses is, is recruiting and retaining those people that really matter. Mm -hmm. And if I, can, if I can compare myself to my competition and say, hey, you only have to work four days, even if it's four tens, I think that's going to tip the scale in most situations. So mm -hmm. there's some, there, there is a, there's a, a carrot out there to, to really chase to see if you can make this work from a, from an employee perspective and from an employer perspective. I think it's interesting you bring up the education aspect because you're right. Parents that are used to having their kids going to school five days a week, all of a sudden it goes to four. That's a big change for them, especially if they're working a normal five day a week job. Now, if they go down to a four day a week job in, 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 in their career, then it works out good for them. But, I, I, you know, the education field um, is one where burnout is really high right now. And I, that's why I was glad you brought that up because, you know, in Iowa, like you talked about, the schools there in the rural areas, they're making that transition. Teachers right now, you know, I've got a, a duly licensed therapist coming on the next segment to talk about stress, it being Stress Awareness Month. Um, educators and nurses are two of the biggest industries that I can think of that are at their worst levels when it comes to burnout right now. So to be able to keep some of these educators in the classroom, this four-day work week might actually save that industry. You know, it very well could. I mean, we all, I think we can all agree that, that they are underpaid, but maybe there's a way for us to get them on a, on a better level playing field without spending more money. I mean, there's ways, this will certainly cost money. I'm not, I don't want to pretend like it won't. Right. But maybe there's a, a, a something other than just pay that will make them feel like they are um, competing appropriately as far as the, the wage and that we can attract the right kind of people to be our educators. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's in, in crisis, there's always opportunity. And, and I think one of the, the silver linings of COVID might be some more flexible situations like what we're talking about now. We're speaking with Joel Patterson. He is the uh, he heads up the Vested Group, and we're talking about the four day work week and how it's starting to become more and more a reality. Um, at, with each passing conversation about it, it's something that our listeners have commented on here, and it's something that many of them want, but again, hard to see that model start taking shape. But like you said, you know, the conversations really changed for us over the past four years during the time of COVID. COVID really has, you know, really has changed everything. And I think the biggest thing you talked about was the meeting aspect. The fact that there was so many ways that some meetings were wasting people's time. And during COVID, that kind of stuff got cut out. So when you came back, a lot of companies came back leaner and meaner. No question. And, and I, I've talked to a lot of companies who actually feel like in some ways, uh, it, it, it's kind of a, a doesn't sound good to come out to say, but in some ways COVID was good for their business, mm -hmm. right? Because it allowed them to make some decisions that they were never really either capable of making or willing to make before. And they found that, hey, that actually has improved things. The downside is still 
how do we maintain that connection with people that we work with? Because, you know, even still, there's a lot of companies that are continuing to work remotely, and we have not figured out a way to replicate the in-person interaction that happens while you're walking by somebody, you overhear a conversation, you see how their weekend was, you talk about baseball or football, you know what I mean? So yeah. we, haven't, we haven't gotten there yet, but it definitely taught us that we can accomplish a lot of things in an environment that made no sense. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I mean, you're thinking going from a five-day to a four-day work week sounds great in one instance, and on the other end, I kind of get a little bit of stress thinking about it because I'm thinking, okay, how am I going to fit five days of work now into four days, especially if it's not the four 10-hour days, um, you know, maybe going to a four eight-hour days. Now, in, in radio, our schedules are pretty flexible. I mean, we a lot of times we're on, you know, sometimes 24-7, um, and we and we love what we do, and and but sometimes we we not sometimes often we go past the typical work workday hours of a nine to five type of deal. But for some people, I can imagine that there's a little bit of stress that comes with the thinking of hey, okay, now I've got five days of work, I got to fit it in the four days because of the company, like you said, you don't want to lose work out of this. But at the same time, on the other side of this, if you can cut out some of those. I don't say break times, but some of that downtime, then it all kind of, I guess, balances out, or at least that's the hope. It is, it is. And we all know that there's a certain portion of the day that most people, if they're in the office or under the people, they're just going to blow off, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's actually okay. That's a good thing. Uh, but that is going to get reduced. It's how do we replicate the, 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 the nuggets that happen in those moments uh, with the interpersonal relationships as we move forward without as much time, but there's no doubt we can all get more efficient if we're challenged. And when we know that we're going to get an extra day off, that's probably going to provide the, the, the incentive that will get us there. I do feel like, though, that some industries, whether they want to or not, are going to have to stay open five days a week because when you have, I mean, whether you're taking care of, um, you know, I guess going to the bank, some different kinds of errands that are for, for businesses that are only open from that Monday through Friday time slot, if they stay open on that Friday when people are normally getting off, it gives them a chance to catch up on things that they wouldn't be able to catch up with on the weekend. Do you see that same thing happening? Oh, absolutely. And, and that extra day, I mean, lots can happen there because you think about things where if you have a culture where people are really invested in, in growing the business and maybe they're doing charitable activities or things like that, that Friday or that Monday or whatever day you have off can become part of that, and you're not taking away from your normal work schedule, and you can really focus on it. So there's there's just a lot of ways to leverage that. And here's one more thing. Mm -hmm. Think about it this way. If, if we had staggered schedules, so some people got Mondays off and some people got Fridays, right. but then you did it alternating weeks, you could actually set it up to where you had a two-day weekend, and then two weeks later you had a four-day weekend. Yeah. And then, it, you know what I mean? So, yeah. so you could really plan some stuff around that. And I think that would get people excited too. I mean, you can have a short vacation doing that, no doubt. That's pretty sweet when you think about that. I never really thought about the staggered, because I always thought about, okay, you got to work Monday through, fr Monday through Thursday and you're off the Friday. But again, because we've been used to, you know, Friday being a work day, you could stagger it like you just talked about. And different industries staggering it in different ways could be very beneficial to, uh, to society. I agree. I, I, there's, there is a lot to like, but like you said, there's a lot of things that have to be worked out, too. No doubt about it. I mean, there's, a, there's a lot of work to be done, but, but it's, it's encouraging to see that there's an organization out there, or several of them, that are taking it seriously, really doing the research, uh, letting it be driven by data, and, uh, and, and we'll see where we go. But we'll have a lot more information in, in the next six months. Well, speaking of data, you know, that's one thing that I'm wondering about, like with Iceland and, you know, these other places. And I know that Iceland has kind of been the one that we've talked about as as a trendsetter in all this, are we, are, we, are we starting to see some data come out that shows maybe that this is reducing burnout or are we just not there yet? Every company that I have read up on, that I have researched that has employed this has reported good results, meaning that productivity is higher, uh, satisfaction is higher. But, I mean, I still think, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put enough confidence in those. They're still limited. Yeah. Uh, and, and really what's happening now is, is, is the, the, the most broadly based um, research effort on it. And, and again, I, I think it's being driven with data. So in just, you know, by the end of the year, for sure, we'll, we'll, we'll at least be able to talk about, hey, what's going on in billion-dollar companies? Because that's how big these companies are. Yeah. Not their entire organization, but a subset of it. And that will really, I think, tell what the reality is. At the Vested Group, do y'all employ a four-day work week? We don't, but I'll tell you, my business partner and I um, have 
recently had the, those conversations for the first time in you know with with real intent mm -hmm. in a long long time so we're looking hard at it this is something that um what was your you know when this started getting talked about early on your first reaction to it were you very skeptical of it what, what was your reaction I usually am uh, when, I, when I see that because I usually immediately think, because if you talk to, you said it earlier, oh, that sounds great. As an employee, it sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a business owner, uh, you immediately start wondering about how you can continue to do what you need to do in order to take care of everyone else that's there, right? Because you're, you're responsible for their salaries. And, and so you start thinking through that. But then with COVID and what's happened over the last couple of years, it's really, it's opened up uh, the possibilities of what could be. And it probably wouldn't have happened without COVID because yeah. we wouldn't know how well the technology held up. We wouldn't have had this mass uh, case of, of everyone being at home. So it really just says, all right, how else can we reimagine how business should be? And I think that's what got us here. Joel Patterson, uh, he uh, heads up the Vested Group. Joel, man, I've been wanting to get somebody to talk about this topic for a while. And um, you were great, man. I appreciate your time. Anytime, Brandon. Have a good all one. Right.